there is only a few people in the world like him. I mean, really, in the world. It's a big decision for Idris to do this. When I mean, it's your own name, and you just, just feel that little bit more sort of responsible. That'd be the weirdest thing, is seeing people running around in Idris Elba gear. This guy, lovely guy, is he Idris Elba? No. Profits of 60 or 70 million pounds, sales of half a billion pounds. I'm a serious company. Entrepreneurs are different. We, for us, everything is life or death. We've not nailed it. I think we will do, but we haven't. We would like to be a lot closer than we are at this point. We are hellbent <laughs> on landing this collection. He hated the word sport and that. I hated it. If we just start putting IE on everything. I mean, nobody knows what the f it is. This put a whole new thing onto our supply chain. Ow! You're right, man. Cut my finger. James calls his obsession millimetre perfect. Yeah, he just uh, messaged me and um, he wants to, to change everything, so. Uh... I think we do need a bit of a conversation about the ranking shoot. It was quite predatory, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. You could say that. You won your commercial pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a fashion icon. I look like an old man. It's crunch time now. Ah! Ah! Go to jail. We will hit November. Just. I hope. How this happened, right? Cheryl and I had a relationship with Superdry. They used to send me clothes to wear if I was going out to events and whatnot. I mean, it just happened like that. There was no real plan towards it. Just we met, me and Julian met, and, and James, and we sat and was like, oh yeah. I told him what I liked. And said, you know, we could, we could help you, you know, pull that together, you know, pull together a nice little range. I was like, yeah. Why not? The great thing is, is that it's a collaboration. So he it not only has, has he got this sort of massive appeal, but actually he's, he loves clothes. He's really hands-on in the whole design process, which is, which is key. We're grafters, you know, we don't stop. We're like 24-7. And James and Julian, who run and own um, Superdry, they're like that. And we just thought, of all the people to collaborate with, this is the perfect partnership. It's a big decision for Idris to do this, you know, to go to a brand who, although we're not, it is potentially perceived as a T-shirt and hoodie brand. When, you know, I'm sure he's had the designer brands, you know, knocking his door down for a few years now. Oh, it's going to freak me out to see to see the full production out there and people walking around in, 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 in my clothes, it's gonna freak me out. <sighs> so today's crucial because we just know what we want to mass produce. Um, to, to launch in, I think, October or November. So they've gone away, designed, manufactured the samples, and it's all happened within four, four months. Cheryl has been closer to it than I have because I'm busy at the minute, but we would like to be a lot closer than we are at this point. We're striving for the same thing, but it feels a lot like we're sort of, we'll wait till James is it's good. Well, I want to be a part of it and say, with James, this is good, and is it? Yeah, let's go for it. That's, just, that's a true collaboration, in my opinion. So today, there's probably about 80% of everything that we, we put on the line list here. OK. And yeah, you can yeah. be as in-depth as you want. You know, if you hate something, you've got to say you hate it, because we can use that somewhere else. All right. Yeah, as, as deep as you want to go. Where do you want to start? Wherever what, you what? want. I mean, we could literally just walk around the whole collection. What about if you coats? Want. Yeah. Just do coats. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Good start. We could strip this back, couldn't we? Yeah. This is too much. Too much there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are massive. Yeah. These feel too much. Yeah. 
Um, this detail is sexy up here. Yeah, it's like badass. That. And the fur is awful, but. But other than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying because I like it. I like it as part of our group. As a prince, the, group. the principle. Yeah, the principle yeah, bit. Absolutely. That is gorgeous, man. Yeah, it's a good one. Isn't it? Look at that. Love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Yes. I love the colours on the... The blue is a good colour, isn't it? Yeah. Idris coming in, we can elevate the fabrics that we're using. We can use organics, we can use Pima cottons. We, you know, we can elevate the whole premium range, which is brilliant. Consumer go, yeah, organic, I'll have a bit of that. You know what I mean? You know, it was my idea, don't you? <laughs> it wasn't your idea. Oh, I brought it up. <laughs> it was not. I brought it up. I asked James, I said, James, what about organic? He goes, yes, mate. No, I said to you. No, you didn't. I did. Unbelievable. <laughs> Cameras come on and he's like, you know, it was my idea, you know. <laughs> This is Brilliant. you, Idris. Right. This is yeah. you. Is it me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jules. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> he used to try everything on for fit. You know, what, what, Julian, with all due respect, you're not Idris Elba, are you? Why are we trying this on you for fit? Because it's the way... I know it's right, matey. I know it's the right thing to wear. Jules, Jim, Idris, Cheryl, all with very strong personalities and definite ideas, all coming together to create this range. I don't know how, because they've all got such strong personalities. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Very, very. Very good. All right, that's it then. Cheryl is my eyes and ears because, you know, I have a busy life and, and so having the time to sit in all the design meetings is impossible. But Cheryl and I are on the, on the same page, have been for years, as she's been dressing me about what we think will work. When you're styling Idris, Idris really loves to get involved. He loves clothes, he's really into the detail. We first yeah, thought of this whole yeah. thing. It had to be as seen on I on Idris, yeah, absolutely. and that is if Idris doesn't wear it, it then sell. why are we doing it? Yeah. Kind of thing, yeah, yeah, you know. And there are some bits in the collection that have to be really commercial, and you know that better than yeah, you know yeah, you guys yeah, know it better than us. Yeah. However, I mean, would Idris ever wear a blue T-shirt with with his name on it at the bottom? Never in a million years. We just got to be careful, guys. I mean, people are buying this because it's an Idris Elba product, so let's. Definitely strip bits off. If we just start putting IE on everything, I mean, nobody knows what the fuck it is. We are criticised sometimes for being too overt, but, um, you know, I think it's hard because we're so well known for our overt T-shirts and graphic hoodies. Did you like oh, the sport? Because he hated the word sport in that. I hated it. it. I mean, it was a real point, like, no sport. I think we have to ask him whether we can have, out of the range, one of them has sport on it, because that makes sense with the, with the range, with the product. He's a retailer, he's a rag trader, you know, I'm a designer and he's a rag trader and that's why I work so well. So he will say, Jim, this is going to be absolutely massive, we need this in the line. Just need that little... But you want your commercial flick. fix. <laughs> yes, you do. That's what you want. <laughs> it broadens the yeah. customer base. <laughs> you want your commercial fix. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the kind of crazy stuff which defines Superdry as a brand, and Julian will make the products which absolutely blow the tills out of the water. He was the first person to really understand that the consumer wanted heavily branded goods. And the moment I saw the industry change, I realised that I, I needed James to work with me to create the next part of what was going to happen in the industry. James, very talented, 
young guy, no money, fresh out of, just sort of fresh on the street. Um, wanted to do a, a skatewear brand. I went straight from art college into setting up bench. Unfortunately, he didn't have, as far as I can understand, any rights to that brand. The chap who had the rights to it was hanging on to the rights, and the chap who'd put all the design in and all the, the knowledge and the, the look and perfected it was sort of out on, out on his ear. He was completely different to anybody I'd ever met in the industry. Um, there was a unique talent, a unique skill. And it took somebody like Julian to spot that talent and think, hang on, I think we can put this to use. I, I think I can pick him up, dust him down, and we can really make something of this. They called it Super Dry. Oh, if you can have two people together, I don't think you could ever get a better two than James and I. Our skills are so perfectly matched. They're like a pair of bickering old ladies, actually, sometimes, but, you know, it works. If it's in this range, yeah. I can do it. But okay. outside of this range, I can't. We range. absolutely need that. No, no, I, I get it. Saint Laurent, do no, you I want? absolutely get it. Yeah. And also, yeah. it's a fabric quality, right, the one we've got. I don't know, I love it, I would get it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure it is. I mean, I don't want to say I love him, but I love him. <laughs> As a business partner. It's a global market and um, the competition has never been weaker. So actually the opportunity at this second is greater than it's, it's ever been. I would joke that he was going to take over the world. A genuine joke, sarcastic, call it what you want. And it was quite, I would say quite often to him. And they literally are taking over the world now. From that little office under the stairs, quickly grew. And now we've got thousands of uh, employees around the world. So it's a pretty amazing story. Started from humble beginnings, built up a business, lo and behold, turned it into a world scale business. Profits of 60 or 70 million pounds, sales of half a billion pounds. A serious company, serious company. Traditionally, America is a graveyard for UK retailers. You know, everyone who's tried, it's been a disaster. I want to be in this mount, full stop. People will go, wow, super dry, brilliant, but I need the footfall. When I met him, uh, a week would, would be basically be deal, 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 uh, more deal. Then it would be a case of after work every day, go to the retreat for a good few pints, and then a bit of food before bed, and get up the next day and do more deals, deals, deals. Let's time a minute outside this door, OK? <laughs> Starting now. Okay, four, three of which are kids, but we'll let them off. If you were just to meet somebody from, you know, Cheltenham, it's in the Cotswolds, it's not London, what would he know? Then he turns up in his scruffy ripped jeans and a, and a battered old uh, blazer. You think, oh, come on, really? There's an element of risk in my heart. I go, OK, I'll do what I do, you do what you do, and let's share the upside. He's actually a brilliant negotiator on leases for property. You know, he's the real world's greatest expert on getting the retailer looking right. It's all about footfall. So the, the, the site upstairs is a beautiful yeah. store, but the sort of customer that's going there is going there to spend $8,000. That means there aren't many customers. This should be and will be a thousand times better than the previous site. Now a landlord will always try and sell you the one that they want to get rid of, but the clever boy works out where the real money's going to be made. Balls of steel, absolutely. If he likes something, there are the numbers, I want it. He's got a boat, pocket change, which he imported from America about 15 years ago, which is moored up in Tewkesbury because there's no fishing regulations in the harbour, so you can fish when you want. I've never been because I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> I knew they'd start fighting at some point in the evening. Tokyo and Japan. I'd say Japan. Japan? <laughs> it's got it written on it. <laughs> well, obviously, the, the preconception of Super Dry is that it's uh, a Japanese brand. Uh, but that's, um, I, I don't mind that kind of um, slight mysticism surrounding it. When they started, Jules and James, they went to do 
went to Tokyo, you know, everyone knows Tokyo is cool, Japan is cool. And then the American collegiate kind of fit with it, came up with the name, Japanese writing, everyone thought we were a Japanese company, which is, you know, thinks you're cool. Now we're in these sheds in Cheltenham still. You know, it's five, six hundred people in one street. Ideally, we've got a couple of hours to do this, so hopefully some, make some magic, I think. Working quite closely with the in-house super drying team, it's good, it's very different, because I'm used to, as a stylist, going in and working with different teams. sense of like, responsibility of getting it right, you know, when it's your own name and you just just feel that little bit more sort of responsible for making sure the pictures are great. Like, if the camera sees me, like actually me, then we're winning. I think it's exciting to, to be in the moment. I can't see what's going on at the actual time because obviously I'm popping the shots off, but uh, hearing everyone sort of going yes, yes, yes in the background is a very, very exciting moment, I think. So. That is one. Yeah. You take your time, <laughs> No, 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 no. You were in a very good zone then, actually. Okay, so first hit. He's uh, amazing. Five. Yeah, absolutely. It was I love him. Easy, easy hit. Yeah, he yeah. looks amazing. He just looked proper cool throughout this. Next one. That one. That one. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Love that. To have an in-house photographer is fantastic, but I also think it's great to expand and work with other visionary people, you know, other photographers, other stylists, other everything. I think we do need a bit of a conversation between you, Julian, with, about the ranking shoot. You know yeah. what you said about that? Yeah. We've got that pencil dim. I'm very happy with what I've done. I'm very happy that I've had the opportunity to shoot it. It's been, a, it's been a great experience and a great guy to work with, as we know, and got great pictures. The great thing about working with somebody like Rankin, he's one of the best photographers in the world, effortlessly cool. Who's to know? We always might see the pictures and go, actually, do we need to shoot with Rankin? I don't know, but yeah, that's another story. started including really. When I arrived in Cheltenham I was in a market store for a couple of years and then I then I took over this premises. Yeah the reputation was that Julian Dungerton was a good retailer, a solid retailer, making good choices time after time. From here we went to Oxford, from Oxford we went to Birmingham, from Birmingham we went to Cambridge. There were certain people you could really do without turning up on your patch. Then I think it was at Edinburgh. Uh, then Norwich, then Glasgow. They took a look around Cardiff and chose to go elsewhere. So, yeah, lovely. Thank God. We traded on nicely for years and, and he continued to grow. 20 million a year we were yeah. sort of turning over as cult. And that's how Superdry was born, within that environment. When Superdry started, I remember him, we used to go to London or wherever, a train station, and you'd say, oh look, one Superdry t-shirt, oh, another. And at first it was really exciting because you'd never see anyone wearing the brand. A bit boring now in Cheltenham. <laughs> you can't play that game. We're going to choose our models for our show, so it's really exciting. We've got loads of models coming and it's really important that we get the right kind of model. We don't want a lot, load of pretty boys. We want it to be quite diverse. If you're gonna have models and campaigns and all that, they should look like the intended buyer. Cool, so I thought, bring them in here, if we like them, 
get them to try some product and send them out for a photo, but no point in photographing no. if we're not feeling it. No. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hello. You all right? Yeah, I'm great. Oh. My name's Chuck. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? Great. Hi, Hi Chuck. Chuck. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Really nice. How old are you, Chuck? I'm 21. Wow, baby. Yeah, look at that face. But it looks so young. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right, thank you guys. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I like him. Brilliantly, brilliant, brilliant shape, but yeah, he's, he's 23. Idris is 40. We can't then have too many teeny boppers. Yeah, no, no, I agree. It depends. He's gorgeous. There's nothing wrong with him, and in real life, he's even better. But is he Idris Elba? No. No. This guy, lovely guy, is he Idris Elba? No. Oh, never, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> never. Face it there. I love that. No. <laughs> That's not Idris. Carolina, her How old are you? 27. Oh, good look. Thank you. Yeah, really good look. Proper bloke. Like him a lot. No, too thin. I agree. I do agree. Too young, too thin. If you've got no, no, him, I agree. I agree. you don't need yeah, him. Yeah, I do agree with that. OK? Definitely Danny. I really like Dom. I know that you're friends with that. I loved him. Loved his look. Okay. See you later. See you Take care. Bye, bye. Bye. Great looking guy, but just not right, I don't think. Anna does this for Superdry all the time, and she's brilliant at it. But it's all the same type of person. And this is slightly different. So, you know, it's part of Anna that she's out of her comfort zone. Do you know any other agencies that have older guys? Are there any specific ones? We've not nailed it. I think we will do, but we haven't. I'm not very good with, like, do you know what I mean? Hi Mark, is that, it's Beck from Superdry. Idris has rung and asked if we can see more guys ranged like 28 to late 30s. I was wondering if you could send a package over of guys that are probably age 28 upwards. November. Just. I hope. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of pressure attached to this project. Um, it's a big project um, and a very exciting project. Our normal obsessions heightened in this instance. You know, James wants us to be out here, um, you know, on the pulse, making sure it's all going exactly right. Wow, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Great design. It's absolutely beautiful, but I think we need to try and improve yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we, we try to improve yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I think James would, uh, would really like these. Well, let's hope so. James calls his obsession millimetre perfect. So the way he talks to suppliers and um, to designers is that the garments have to be millimetre perfect. Oh, he, 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 James loves clothes. He's, he's a designer. I mean, he's the best designer I've ever met in my life. So, um, I mean, by a million miles. We're using so, super heavyweight flight fabrics on the outside, fully jacquarded tweed on the inside, and, you know, super weight zips, blah, 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 like heavy ribs, and to make it look so perfect with all those super high quality premium materials is a really hard thing to do. Yeah, great. We would not be where we are without James. James is in essence, the brand. He, he breathes it, he lives it.
Yeah, he just uh, messaged me and um, he wants to, to change everything, so... Uh, a lot of work to do, but it's all right, we'll work it out. Um, he wants to inject the funk, but I think it's already pretty funky, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look through it all again, just to make sure it's all okay. I'm, I'm struggling to know how to change it, so I've got to really think about that. James is perfectionist, so he always see new things and uh, new developments, and uh, so it's not a surprise. We always made this. When the changes are made, it's really hard to sort of pass that information on because they put all that effort in um, and uh, an investment, and, and then that same effort and investment needs to go in again. The way James works is relentless, and he will jump from one thing to another in a heartbeat. Keeping up with him is demanding, let alone trying to get him to work to a schedule is impossible. You know, he'll be in the showroom till 10 o'clock at night on his own, with all his product all over the place, with his hand scribbles everywhere, his magazine tears, his, he's just in the zone. Um, and you come in the next morning, I'm always in really early, and you think, what the hell has happened here? James is something else. He's, 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 yeah, he's unique. When an idea strikes you and you know it's right, it doesn't matter where you are, so it could be in the middle of the night. A lot of the time is after, either during training or after training or after some sort of crazy fucking run, running through the desert somewhere or something, and it, an idea will come into your head, and it's like, what, where is the first piece of paper that I can draw this down on? So you'll be the end of things, it'll be like a packet of Nurofen, you're ripping it open, and just to get to the cardboard and you're scribbling away. I've seen him r going for a run along, you know, an Istanbul crazy traffic-filled street, or it could be getting chased by a monkey in, in Delhi. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> you'll see him running in India, you'll see him running in... Hong Kong, it won't be in a gym, it'll be running in the streets. Those guys in the factories are absolutely as skilled as what I can put into this process. The way that they can take what I'm explaining, expressing and sketching and put it into garment form so quickly, it would just absolutely blow you away. I would love to have a point of no return date where we say to James and Julian, stop, you know, you can't make any more changes. James will tweak it and keep tweaking it until the last day he can. We are hellbent <laughs> on landing this collection for the 26th of November. To me, Rankin's one of the best British photographers of our decade. Having seen his book and his work, obviously, it's outstanding photography and the people he's photographed, you only have to look for his book to see, you know, some of the most famous names, you know, current names you can see. Idris is one of our, like, he's a fantastic actor. He's one of our best actors. So it's a perfect marriage. With a brand like Superdry to persuade the owners that they need to work with a a famous photographer. Um, it's always going to be a challenge, but I think it will bring something out to the table that we haven't had before. It's very easy for other photographers and other people to run away with the brand. And I think we've got to be really careful because he has a certain style now, whether or not that will be that will be right, no doubt. And clearly he'll, we will want him to do his thing, but I think supporting that by steering it will make a little bit of sense for us. <laughs> Jimmy can do this. He can do this. He doesn't get the skin tone. He doesn't have as many, like, I don't know. And just... it, don't forget, this is like without any retouching or anything. Oh, and Jimmy right. can, it sends it to a top retouch, it looks nice. But... Yeah, it's really lovely. I love that yeah. one. That's cool. Oh, that's that's cool. so cool. Yeah. That's going to be great for your magazine, but you know what? You know what? James and Julian will want that. Okay. Okay, so okay. should we do a few more? Mm. 
just because we're in the zone. I'm not really the super dry demographic. You know, I'm like late 40s and I'm a bit more like simple. Yeah, that's not right for me. Our range, there's, there's lots of huge coats and he put them on, which was hysterical. He's good looking, Ranky. <laughs> <laughs> but when we did find stuff that looked good on him, it looked brilliant on him and he wanted it. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I think this is you. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Thank you, everyone, for your hard work, man. Thank you so much. I'm proud of this campaign. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In such a sort of short moment with River, just I think some of those images we did get were absolutely sort of iconic. <laughs> One which funny enough he just didn't like so much, which we all just fell over for. And he was flicking his jacket, and you could just see this most amazing lining in the jacket, and him looking down. I think it's probably, I have to say, a pretty powerful shot. Looking through the images here from from ranking sent over just now, I think these are very typical ranking shots, as we, as I would have expected to have seen them. In all fairness, I think that's definitely a trademark of it. Just I think I've seen that in three times I've shot him doing exactly the same that. Sorry, right. It sort of almost feels like they're just more pictures from what we took. James and Julian have gone through the shots. We had two lots to choose from. We had the great shots that Jimmy had done, which were full of energy and very, very super dry. And then we also had the Rankin shots, which were slightly different. We're all really, really thrilled with the results that have come back. We all really like the style and the work that Rankin's done, and we're really excited. Everybody's favourite, everybody's favourite from the three is this one of Idris because we think he looks incredible. What are we buying into? Are we buying into the celebrity photographer for the reason of, of obviously how that will be received by say the, the press for example? Is that going to get you your front covers because of the name? I think to, 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 to Joe Bloggs and probably a lot of the people who are going to buy this product they wouldn't know the difference between my name and Rankin's name. Talking honestly, I think it has been difficult, the Idris collaboration, because, you know, for the first time, it's almost like another person in the Julian and James relationship, isn't it? When I was growing up, you know, as a kid, you know, considered, like, one of the best fighters. Uh, when we first met, I started, around about that time, the, um, Band-Aid, Band-Aid record was quite big, I think. Feed the World, and I started singing it because he was a skinny, tall, black guy. And I started singing it, and he took a bit of offence to it, so I, he kind of like clumped me one. If you was the best fighter, like all the other schools would you know, know about you, and you know, you'd show up at their school and all that, and the fashion was a big deal. Them times was like um, Kappa, Adidas. Yeah. Maybe Sergio Ticini, yeah, Sergio Fred Perry, which, um, if I remember rightly, uh, Idris never had none of it. No, I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you had the freshy trainers, you were the man. When I was young, I was definitely a hustler. I was definitely entrepreneurial. I really came from a working class family, didn't have that much money, my parents, you know, and I had big ambitions and expensive tastes, so to work. Not only has he got this sort of massive appeal, but actually he's, he loves clothes, he's loved the whole design process. He's really hands-on, which is key. I think he looks brilliant in them because they're made for him, <laughs> you know, so if he didn't look good in them, I'd be worried for Super Troy. I would be like worried for their lives. <laughs> like, I wouldn't say control freak, but it's got to be his way or the highway. Looking at our whole line, why we don't have that up there, I don't know. Really good. That's a definite look. I'd wear that jacket. Ow. You're right, man. Fucking cut 
my finger. No, I don't think we're there yet with the beanies yet. That's a beanie. Yeah, yeah. You can't get rid of that beanie. <laughs> Everywhere I see, I see that beanie. <laughs> I want to take it and put it in my washing machine, really. Do you know what actually might be nice under there? His uh, hooded... Cashmere? Yeah. Mm. I would wear that. Shabang. I say the, the word shebang more times in one day than anybody else I know. I've heard Ray Winston say, Bosh, wallop, shebang. And I've probably nicked the shebang bar and ran with it. Shebang. 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 So now everything's... Leading man lever. See that? Shebang. Idris is flying over from his film set to be with us for literally like six hours because that's the last chance that he can really have input into uh, making any design changes or fit changes. In principle, all the clothes are great, the hoodies, everything's gorgeous. But just how they fit and sit on me, that would be another day of right tweaking. You know, the suppliers want to start making things on their production lines in the next few weeks. So yes, we can make sensible changes, but big changes might cause a problem. That tweak would then become what is definitely an Idris cut. You know what I mean? And I don't have that yet. Living it large in Charlton, aren't you? Hello, Hello mate. <laughs> all right. How are you? Are you skin and bone? Huh? Where's it all gone? Oh, it's working. I'm just such a bad pain, I've got to smash my neck. A lot of pain at the moment, I can hardly turn. Well, you're, you're, you're trying everything on, you know that? I'm not. I'm not trying anything on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. What's the agenda? So we've got the two models, and then we're going to get all the clothes out and go through every single piece oh, really of sick. every outfit and see the fit. They're not in all our colours. Right. But yeah, 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 do you need some painkillers or something? I've got some. I'm, I'm fine for now. Cheers. This is the way you get to sort of like you know, kiss it with your personal thing. My personal thing. I've got thing about buttons and cuffs and all that. So the fact that I've got a chance to do this now is perfect. Super important. So what I'd like, if we could, is I don't like the blue writing on the black buttons. I have black on black. Black on black. And then the black. I'm happy with black, black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All I can see is the zipper. Takes away from the jacket a little bit. Yeah. But this one, this is tidy, sexy. It's not nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Light Take that. the zip down. Cool. I'm happy with that. Yeah. 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 Cool. Shabang. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So that, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just happened two days ago. I don't know what's happened. I really don't. I just woke up in the morning and I couldn't move. I think I slept on it badly. So I've got a difficult conversation with Julian, which is asking him to broach the subject of the underwear packaging shot with Idris and asking Idris if he will model the underwear for the packaging. Every time I think about it, I feel sick. I've put aside a a room <laughs> and set up a little mini studio to just whisk him upstairs and, and make it as easy as possible. For him, it'll be one of the biggest grossing products. OK, great. Thanks, Julian. So, yeah, hopefully he'll feel much more relaxed. <laughs> he will. I'm in absolute agony, and this morning I just, like, I literally cannot move. I, I can't even... When I look up, I can't look up. If you were to come here, I could pause the meeting for about half an hour, 45 minutes, perhaps. I'm Idris. What's your name? Carl, brilliant car. I'll see you in a little bit. Look at the state of that. I'm supposed to be a fashion icon. I look like an old man. I need Julian to be brave on that one. <laughs>
I'm not going to be kind to you. This is going to crack hard. You ready? Yeah. Oh, sorry, fella. Try and breathe. Oh, front door. Front door. <laughs> Other side. <laughs> said not to swear. <laughs> Well, somebody said he'd finished, so so I went up there and um, and um, he patently hadn't finished, and that wasn't really the moment. So I felt a bit uncomfortable walking in on him. Can I ask a supremely large favour? Five minutes of uh, underwear shooting. No. It's crunch time now. Ah! Ah! Get out! Go on, get out! Oh, so yeah, maybe I'll pick my timing a bit better next time. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Well done, everyone. Good. Yeah, he says only got one phone, 6310i. <laughs> Very hard to source, I can tell you. And even harder to back up on a computer. I had one, everybody had one. When the new one came out, I got the new one. Everybody else got the new one. And then when the iPhone came out, or, or Blackberry came out, people got those. Julian, however, still has the brick. It does everything he wants to do. It texts and makes calls. He's not interested in emails, he's not interested in cameras or anything else. Hello? 275. Speaking. He loves the brick. He walks around with the brick. It's slower than a tortoise. He knows how it works, you see. He can't work a computer, doesn't know how to work a computer, doesn't want to know how to work a computer, and does not want to learn how to work a different telephone. Contact us clear to play level one to zero. Thank you, my best wishes. The beauty of him having the jet is, from a work point of view, he can do a European tour in a day. He can fly to Germany, Italy, and Spain, and back to his doorstep. Be home after landing within 15 minutes with his favourite cup of coffee and Cornish pasty. Oh look, another pasty! They're trying to do kill me. to New York with him, and there he is with his six newspapers ready for the flight, and like a homeless person, as he reads them, he stuffs them down the side of himself. By the end of the flight, he's insulated himself with all these newspapers, and he gets up, and this, this, this air stewardess is just looking at him, and he's, you know, his jeans are hanging out of his ass, and he's got his fag ready rolled so he can get off the plane and have one, and there's like a body shape of jewels in newspaper. It's, it's incredible. Quarter past 11 in Germany. The day hasn't even started, it's a weekday. Look how busy it is. This is, the, this is the heart of Cologne. So this wasn't officially on the market, but everyone kind of knew that, that this company was in trouble, and I spotted they were in trouble, I think, about three or four years ago. When you're in a position of strength and your target is limping, <laughs> then that's probably the time to pounce. It was quite predatory, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Right, we've got to go to Barcelona now. I mean, well, that's the sign of a true entrepreneur, isn't it? Um, somebody who's ready to take risks, calculated risks, but then absolutely stand by his decision. We're not coming in as some yeah, you don't want to pay, two-bit uh, Brits sure. that who don't know what the fuck they're doing. We want those kind of deals, and we want to be treated in, with that sort of thought process. When he looks at you, he's looking into your soul. He wants to know, are you genuine? Is what you've got what you say it is? We like this a lot for the facade, you know? Obviously, yeah, it's, not, it's, it. not, it's not a... Of course, it's beautiful. Not What's the quote in rent? He's gotten off now 1.1, and he's asking for 1.2. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I love the front, but that's all I love about it. I said uh, you get a quick response. Very, yeah, very yeah, quick. Sorry. I don't want to waste <laughs> the time. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Agents have turned up for what they probably expected was a uh, hour's meeting, a little bit of lunch, trying to smooth Julian. Uh, 30 seconds, they got the answer they didn't want. <laughs> Doesn't take to no prisoners. Don't treat us like we're going to take some shitty property, do a landlord deal and sure. overpay for it. This will just make you cross. Entrepreneurs are different. We, for us, everything is life or death. I've always said it's like being in a cage with a tiger. You go to an appointment, you walk into the office and you think, oh, here we go. Am I going to come out alive? When I walk into a store and it's not right, for me, that's like the end of my world at that moment. So I have to rectify it, I have to get it right. It's a personal pride, it's a personal, you know, it literally is life or death. So there's a 
people going here. Well, that's what was on your plan, wasn't it? It doesn't have to be, though. Well, should we put it there and see? Let's put it there. We'll take the back off. Our relationship has evolved over the years from being potential competitors to sort of wheeler dealers with each other and now has evolved into, uh, yeah, shop fits on a global scale. Julian uh, has a knack, a way of getting people he wants to work on projects that he wants and the right people in the right place. And um, back in the day when I was very independent, let's do my own thing, uh, he always used to say that we'll be doing something one day, matey. And uh, sure enough, comes full circle. Just like he knew James would be the right person to do super dry and create that lovely product. Uh, he sort of said, look, I love what you do with your coffee bars. Can we, uh, can we start bring some of that to the next generation stores? And uh, here I am. Level of detail is really important. This is uh, a series of photographs by Rankin of Idris. And what we've done is put them in a, a really eclectic series of, of vintage frames. The staff have already been sort of Instagramming themselves with them. So yeah, little details. So we've come a long way from one small store in Cheltenham crammed with product, floor to ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> very true. To, uh, to a, a very, massive store. To a massive store product. in London. But at the heart of it, you've got Julian signing off every detail, demanding every detail, and making sure I'm up a, a ladder with a, a rubber glove on, getting the last touches dead right. Ready? Come on. Oh. For you. That's a much better colour. Much moodier, much better. Sharp. Very sharp. I'm overjoyed. <laughs> It's relieved. 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 relieved is the word. Is relieved. That is a relief. I'm it is a relief. <laughs> the tension oh, levels. Relief. Tension levels have gone down a little bit now, so it's yeah, good. It's a bit better. It's looking good. Everybody loves it. Thank God. Well, this is it, man. This is uh, D Day, Launch Day, I E Day. Um, Super excited, nervous a little bit, I'm not sure how people are going to actually uh, take it. But we're really proud of the product. I sound like Julian now, he says that all the time. It's a smashing product. There are only a few people in the world like him, I mean really in the world, who capture that space. Some people, well, most of us mere mortals haven't, but uh, yeah, he's got that magic. And the fact that he's British, uh, you know, British and with us is just, a, oh yeah, I think it's amazing. He's always thinking about doing something else, thinking about how to like, make, you know, make money, doing something different, bringing something more to the table. Bottom of my heart, we're very proud of the collection. And you know, it isn't one of these, you know, just fancy endorsements. I really do love fashion. I'm not a fashion designer, but I think I'm an influence. Someone's stolen something already, let's get me. Uh, but I do consider myself an influencer in that sense. So you guys supporting that is taking this dream further and further, and I appreciate you being there. You stood outside and that's massive and I love that. So uh, am I allowed to, to let them unleash them into the room? Is that true? All right, so thanks for coming, guys, and make your way that way. There you go. Thank you. The bomber jacket over there, and I love that bomber jacket because it's it's reversible. Yeah. So you can get two prizes for one. You know what I'm saying? It's the gift that keeps on giving. That's just the gift that keeps on giving. That's a good that's a good coat because all men like a bomber jacket. There's yeah. a couple of lovely cardigans over there. And then, of course, the T-shirts are just really nice yeah. fit. This is a lovely... Oh, I mean, I'm selling it now, but, you know, you get You're the picture. You're selling it. It's like being on QVC with you. <laughs> Maybe that's going to be your backup career if it goes wrong. If it all goes wrong, that's what I'll do.
super dry really made us, you know, they've gone through it this time. They've got really gutsy and a bit more, you know, showy than they ever really have, which is all making everyone nervous a, li a little bit, I suspect, but it's good. It's all good. It's me, baby. This is how we do it. 24 hour business. Mm. minute and pulled off is incredible we're quite a last minute company in the fact that when we design it's always pushing it right to the edge of time so we get exactly what we want at the right time but this put a whole new thing onto our supply chain I think over the years as we move forward I'm going to be certainly making more time to be in the design process I want to learn, you know, from James and those guys, but I also want to be able to be influential in that whole process. I think that the three of them together are brilliant and they all bring something totally different to the table. It's a bit like the three tenors, actually. They all bring a different note. James is unique. He will talk 100 miles an hour. At first, it's like a mishmash. It's like somebody mixing a record, pulling it all together. You've got a bit of a Vivaldi, and you've got a bit of hip hop, and you've got a bit of everything, and it's all mixed in the pot. And you're thinking, oh my God, what is this guy about? And then when you hear the record, you go, ah, I get it. Cheryl's been the linchpin between the whole lot, I would say. Um, making sure everyone is happy, making sure Idris is comfortable with the feel, the look, the taste level, everything else. Jim with the design level, feeding into him ideas constantly, feeding into Jules about retail, about the vision, and just amalgamating them all into one little team. This is something that me and Idris are so passionate about, and to see it actually in store is a big day. It's a big, huge thing in my career, and it's something that I'll never, ever forget. This, hopefully, is going to be a forever deal. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a forever person, so um, I, I'm, I'm kind of loyal by nature. And if you can make something work and build it and build it together, then, um, then yeah, absolutely, this is... This is for me, it, there's no end to it. Whatever we do, we, we just immerse ourselves a million percent. Um, and even when we started Superdry and we only had five T-shirts and five polo shirts, we still came across as if we were a global brand. And they're having a serious look at China. Unbelievable. There are 1.1, 1.2 billion people in China. Huge market. You never get to perfection. That's the great thing about, about the whole journey. So you, you, you never stop. You're always can be better, 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 better. 